everybody. I am Laura Nelkin. I'm a knitwear designer and I live in upstate New York in the Finger Lakes region just outside of Ithaca. And I have an alter ego, Lola, who you'll probably see at some t point during this log. She is super fun. I'm the more professional one and she gets a little wild sometimes. So we're a very good balance for each other. I really need to find somebody to do these logs with because I think it's more fun when you have a little rapport. It would be a little more fun for me anyway, so I'll try to do that with, with Lola as, as we need to. Sound good? Um, I have a lot to tell you about. I have six patterns getting ready to release, and what I'm doing with that is releasing one pattern a month for the, sorry, silly me, one pattern a week for the next six weeks. That started out with the shrug that I'm wearing called Hug You Me, which I'm going to tell you all about, and then every Wednesday I'll be posting the next pattern to Ravelry. I think I'm going to take off the Wednesday of Thanksgiving week, and then the last one will release the first Wednesday of December. It's kind of like a relief to have a plan. I had all these patterns ready to go, and I realized I didn't really know exactly how I was getting them out or what that was going to look like. So now we are good to go and I'm, I'm relieved. So Huggy Me is a shrug and I might slap up a little photo here for a second so you can see the back of it. That's a little hard to see with me on camera right now. It is a shrug that is worked from the center out and the naming behind it is kind of fun. I um, One of my closest friends has a daughter who's about a year and a half younger than my daughter, Bella, and I used to watch Sarah a bit when she was little, and she was absolutely adorable and really not good at her prepositions, like really was like, her, her language was unique and stunning. And she used to come running up to me, like I just had this image of her in my kitchen running up to me and being like, hug you me and like of course you just like stop everything and give this adorable toddler a huge huge hug right and then we kind of started saying that in our family just kind of in passing like hug you me and so it's a thing we've always said with each other and when I um, designed this shrug Sarah is a dancer now she's an absolutely stunning dancer and as I was designing it I was like oh this would be so perfect on her it's like the best woolly hug, and I realized that I could use her name to name it. Um, so that is where the name comes from. If you're a little like, why is it called Huggy Me? That doesn't even make any sense. Um, so you have a little background, which is fun. Um, sometimes naming is really easy. Like that was very easy to do. Um, other times, naming can be very challenging. Like the design that I'm doing for Knit Ithaca, I think I finally landed on a name for that, and. Um, a few people came up with the same name that is the one that I'm going with, but that was a challenging one to come up with. So let me tell you a little bit about Hug You Me. I ended up knitting, I didn't actually knit them all myself, but I ended up knitting um, the design in a few different yarns so that you guys could really see how different it looks, and I'll certainly give you links to things below so you can look more closely and get an idea of how different yarns behave in this design. Um, I originally designed it with a Cloudborn, I think it was a Highland Superwash, which is like a heavy worsted Aran weight yarn, because um, Blueprint had asked me if I would do a design for them, and they actually went through my back catalog of designs, and Sun found um, a shrug I had done years ago called Prospect Shrug out of a lace weight yarn, and she was like, could we do that, but like big and chunky and yummy? And I was like, that is the best idea. I totally want to do that. Thank you so much for thinking of that. Um, and it definitely turned out that I couldn't just like upsize that pattern. I ended up changing a lot about it. This pattern was one of the more challenging patterns I've done in a while in terms of um, testing and tech editing and math because the geometry was quite unique for me and I was thinking about things a little bit in a way I've thought about them before but I also really like bounced off a bit and it's so important to me that fit works in multiple sizes and that instructions make sense to people so there was um it was a bit it was a bit of work my testers definitely they all get a really big extra hug when I see them next because I worked them hard on this what happens with Hug You Me is Hug You Me is worked I think that's this is the collar here 
Um, it is worked from the center out. I can't see the screen when I do that. So it's worked from the center out right here, and you work out and around in a square. And then all of the stitches are put on a holder except for the left sleeve stitches, and those are worked out to the cuff, and then you do a bind off. And then you go back to the right sleeve stitches, and those are worked out flat to the cuff. So you end up with these like two flat sleeves coming off of a square and you have stitches held at the top and the bottom for the collar. And then the next thing that needs to happen is you need to join the sleeve together. But I found that if I just seamed the sleeve together, it got really tight right here and like wasn't fitting well. So I ended up putting in a panel, you can see this little lace panel right here, that's shaped just, it's the same way that I do um, panels in the novice construction where you're working across and binding off a stitch from one side and then working across and binding off a stitch from another side. So that panel is worked back and forth, binding off stitches from the edge of the sleeve until you get to right here. And what that does is make the sleeve wider right here. Like our arm doesn't go you know, it doesn't stay the same diameter, or sorry, not diameter, circumference, right, from here all the way up to here. So it makes sense that you wouldn't want your sleeve to do that unless you were going with like a straight tube. But our bodies are not straight tubes, so that doesn't make any sense. And then you go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, and then you pick up stitches, like you have those extra side panel sleeve stitches, and then you pick up around the back, and then you pick up these sleeve stitches over here, and then you pick up down around the other stitches that are on a holder, and all of a sudden you've come all the way around, and you're working in the round again, and you're working in towards the center. At a certain point I found, and I actually, when I first designed this, I think I ripped like three or four times and I didn't tell you about it every time I ripped. Max, my husband, certainly knew every time I ripped because I just wanted it to be good and it wasn't quite there yet. Um, there needed to be short row shaping at a certain point because as you added width by knitting this way, you were also adding length and the proportions were getting off. So after I um, worked for a while coming in straight, then I stopped putting rounds into the back of the collar so the collar wouldn't get too high, but the back would get longer. It ended up working out really well, but there, was a, there were some fussy bits to get the shaping just the way I wanted it. And then you work some ribbing and that's worked all the way around and then you do a bind off. So you end up with this hug that's kind of like a round but it kind of has sleeves and it's so easy to throw on and wear. Um, and I went to a brunch this morning with some friends and they were all like, what is that that you're wearing? And there might be a few people who aren't really knitters who are maybe thinking about knitting again. Um, I'm not sure this is a beginner pattern, I'm going to call it intermediate, but if you're a fearless knitter, you are absolutely fine to knit it. And I set up a knit along thread in my Ravelry group, I'm happy to support you guys there. Just let me know if you have any questions and I will help you get going with your huggy me's. I can't wait to see them. Oh, I was going to tell you about yarns. So yarn wise, um, I did two, sorry, I knit one in the Cloudboard Highland Superwash, and then Kelly, who tested for me, thank you Kelly, knit another one in the Highland Superwash. And then Carol, this green one that I'm wearing, um, Carol knit this in a local farmer's yarn called Ironwood Hill Farm Studio, and that is with Finn Sheep that Teresa grows on her property, and then this is naturally dyed gray with marigold. It's an absolutely gorgeous, wooly, yummy yarn, and um, I know that Carol loved knitting with it, and I know that when I put it on my model to take some photos of her, because Carol let me borrow it, that my model kind of would have would have run away with it if she could have. It looks so good on Natasha. Um, and then the version that I'm wearing is in Julie Aslan's Nurtured. And if you've never knit with Nurtured before, it's a Rambouillet blend that is milled at Green Mountain Spittery. Um, and it's pre basically dyed in the fleece and then milled. So the colors come out of the mill, as you see here. Um, this colorway is Tassane. 
and I love it. It's so warm and yummy. It's like a little bit purpley and a little bit rosy, but kind of neutral. It seems to kind of go with everything. And um, this one, Marguerite knit, but I'm getting to keep it. So she sample knit it for me as, as a great way to test the pattern one more time. It was like the pattern was ready to go. And I was like, Marguerite, can you help me out? Because I just need to know and I need one in Nurtured for me because the Cloudborn ones go off to Blueprint and I don't normally get to see them for years and years. <laughs> Sorry, I looked out the window and I just saw my cat like running across the yard. Um, some of you might notice that this is a different location than I've shot in before and I'm trying out shooting in my office in front of my bookshelf just because it's a little more intimate of a space and I think the um, sound is better and the light is a little better in here. It's easier to control. Um, so let me know what you think if you like it in here. It's fun. I think it's fun to just have you in my office with me. Um, I want to show you what I got at Rhinebeck. For those of you who don't know, Rhinebeck is also called New York State Sheep and Wool. It is a huge festival that happens every year in Rhinebeck, New York. I've been going for, and I couldn't even tell you how many years I've been going for. I took last year off because I was in Scotland, but I was very excited to go back this year. And I was actually not as busy as I normally am. I scheduled less meetups and I actually had a little time to walk around and get falafel with friends and just kind of enjoy myself and be in absolutely gorgeous weather in a stunning place and getting to see yarns, which is always such a treat. As much talking makes me thirsty. So do you guys want to see what I got? It's pretty fun. Um, let's start with this obsession I've had lately. So I've been knitting a lot of bralettes and I've been doing that because I'm so deep into getting all of those designs that are done out to you all that I haven't had time for a new design work or I don't have like the, the brain bandwidth to do both things at once. So while I'm working on getting stuff out to you and not working on new designs, I am knitting up some bralettes. This is the framework bralette um, from Jessie May. I've also been knitting her ripple bralette Framework is done in DK weight and the Ripple Bralettes are fingering weight and um, they're very fun to knit. It's almost like so like therapeutic sock knitting. You're just like knitting around and around and around and then there's some interesting stuff going on when you get to the shaping but there's lots of time for just picking up and putting down and not doing math and not thinking and that's just really what I need right now while I'm getting that other stuff done and also getting ready for Knit Ithaca. So. Framework Bralette uses DK weight superwash yarn. So when I was at Rhinebeck, I ended up just like really enjoying buying superwash yarn. So I got this skein of yarn from Spun Right Round in this gorgeous caramelly color called Hoof It. And this one's going to be for me. And then I have one on the needles. It's in my bag. I forgot to grab it before I started filming and that one's for Bella and it's this in this awesome reddish color from Into the World that is going to be so cute on her. Um, I do think with these like I know for me that I'm going to wear a little bralette or bra underneath them. I don't think that they'll have support to wear them on their own so for a little while I was calling them bras but they're not bras they're like bralettes it's more like a tank top. I've been making mine longer than written in the pattern so it kind of covers more of the torso and they end up being like a wool undershirt so I've been wearing them on chilly days and really been happy with them. I totally get that they're not for everybody but for me it's kind of my latest knitting side obsession besides all my work knitting. Um, I also got, let's see what else did I get. I got um, a skein of Ritual Dyes um, Maven in Natural and this is 100% Rambouillet and it's milled in the US and I think the yarn is from the US and I have an idea to match this with the Feeder Brook yarn that I used in um, the Ithacowl and in Brioche Booster. I have some more coming and I want to see how they play together for some two color brioche because I'm in the mood for brioche again. It's time. It's been a while. Um, I'm going to grab one thing to show you. It's the cool thing about being in my office is everything's really close. Um, I also got this absolutely fabulous um, new hand lotion from Utopia. It's called the best hand cream ever. 
It has lanolin in it. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get this for this year's N Club for a goodie, which I know is giving away a big deal, but I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get it or not, if we're going to be able to make it work. Um, but my hands always get really, really dry in the winter, and I am absolutely loving this. One of the things I love is the pump, because it's got this great pump action. I'm not going to do it right now, because my hands will get all slimy for touching stuff. But I find that it soaks in really well, so I can get it on, and then it's not like my hands are slippery. Like, I feel like I could put it on and go back to my knitting and not have to, like, wait 20 minutes until your hands, like get all comfortable. So that was a good score. And those are the kind of things I look for at festivals. Like I don't actually need that much more yarn, but sometimes I'll find some product that's handmade by a person that gets me really excited and it's functional. Um, I use a lot of hand cream in the winter. Next up, I got seven skeins of Merino um, yarn from Catskill Merino and this yarn is absolutely stunning. I adore Dominique. She raises, she has the largest flock of Merino sheep in the U.S. and they raise the sheep and then she has yarn milled out of them and then she dyes them as well, the yarns. Um, this is a heavy worsted Aran weight and so when I first got it I thought I would make another Hug You Me but I think maybe I need to do something else with it. Like maybe I don't know, do you guys remember Novice Jacket, um, which I did in a super bulky yarn a bunch of years ago, and I remember at the time saying that I should downsize that into like a heavy worsted for more of a like sweater you could wear around the house. Um, so I might do that with this, which I think would be yummy and um, would be appreciated, because that super bulky jacket is amazing, but you really can only wear it like when you're going outside, it's not an easy around the house sweater because it's so, so heavy. So let me know what you think of that idea. You can leave comments here or over in the Ravelry thread. Let me know. I totally want to hear from you about that. I love, I love your input. Um, so I got that Merino. And then every year at Rhinebeck, one of the first places I go, and this year it was actually our first place. We ever like beeline for the um, handwoven towels there is a weaver who makes these totally gorgeous, her name is Karen Tenney. She makes these absolutely stunning hand-woven towels out of mercerized Pima cotton. And I've bought them almost every year I went to Rhinebeck since I found out about her. So I've been building quite a collection and I get one for myself and I get one for my mom. And my mom doesn't watch these, so we're totally safe. And I just haven't decided yet which one I'm keeping and which one I'm giving to my mom. This one is totally my mom's colors, um, but my mom is more responsible than I am, so she would do very well with this cream one in terms of like keeping it from getting stained. So I haven't quite decided. Um, and then I got one for my friend Jake, who's turning 50, and he's really into handwork, and I know that he'll really appreciate this towel. He's also moving to England, so I'm hoping it's like not too big a present for him to take with him, but I really love this one as well, you can see all the checks in there. Um, what else do we have? Ooh, good stuff. That's my snack for later. I always have a snack. Um, one of the patterns that is coming out, I think it's going to be in November of the six patterns, is the bearing blanket pattern, which you can kind of see behind me all sneaky right here. It's in testing right now. I'm just trying to make sure yardages are working correctly. Um, and I got four skeins of Dream State from Spin Cycle. This is actually my first Spin Cycle, so I'm going to officially no longer be a Spin Cycle virgin once I have knit with this. And I'm thinking that this will be like the inside of the bearing blanket and then the lacy part, and I'll use some solid yarn for the middle part of the squares and then the borders. And I do have some um, blogs that I've written about the design process for the bearing blanket, so you could go read those if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about. Um, but I, I'm thinking about what the solid should be. This is a worsted weight, and it's actually a superwash yarn, which I didn't realize. I always thought that it was, um, you know, only washed by hand, but I guess it is a superwash. 
I'm thinking about using Magpie Fiber's new Nest yarn, and I have an email into them to talk about color because it's hard for me to tell what color is going to work best with this. I found this like really gorgeous twilighty purpley color that's like heather that I think will go really, really, really well with it. So I'm going to I'm going to cast on for this soon, at least to do a square to see what gauge is looking like. Um, let me see if I bought anything else. I don't know if I did. I was pretty, I was kind of under control. I got presents, I got some yarn, but not like a ton of yarn, and hand cream. That's not bad. The other thing, I'm sorry, I keep like leaning out of the frame to get stuff. The other thing that I got um, before we left to go down to Rhinebeck, my friend Andrea came to visit. She made me that pumpkin you can see right up there. Let me show it to you guys. It's like so cute. It's the cutest, sweetest little pumpkin. I think this is from Susan B. Anderson's Harvest. Um, I forgot what she calls it. It's not like a wreath, but it's a, um, you know, where you have things hanging all along. There, brain fart. You just saw that happen. We'll blame that on Lola because still not coming up with it. It's not a banner. It's not a wreath, but it hangs and it's long and the pumpkin is one of the designs on there. And she just knit them all weekend while we were hanging out. It was really fun. And then she was just like gifting them to people. Um, but Andrea and I went somewhere locally and I saw these sitting on a shelf. They're called Grabanzos. And the Grabanzo basically tastes exactly like a Whopper but it's got chickpea meal on the inside and a bunch of other ingredients. It's basically like this chickpea processed plant, or not plant, but food that has the texture of a Whopper, but it is way, way healthier for you and dairy free. And then it's coated in dark chocolate. And they're made in Ithaca. They were actually designed by a bunch of food science people, students at Cornell, and they are going to market. I'm, I'm not sure you can find them much outside of the Ithaca area right now. They do have a website, and I'll link to that for you. Um, but the Grabanzos, since they're made in Ithaca, it means everybody's going to get these in their knit Ithaca goodie bags. So I'm giving away a little something. So if you're, if you're coming in at Ithaca, don't worry, you're already going to get to try these. They aren't gross, which is not like the highest recommendation in the world. I love them. I love Whoppers and I never buy Whoppers, but I do love a Whopper. So now I have Grabanzos. It's like a Whopper, but healthier. Maybe they'll hire me to be their spokeswoman, the Grabanzo spokeswoman. That's like my new goal in life. Um, I'm looking down to see if there's anything else to tell you about. I am looking forward to working on some new designs. I've got them all up here. I have Lola's Choice already done for November. That is one of the patterns that's coming out in the six. The Lola's Choice for January is actually pretty much on the needles, and um, so that one's good to go. I feel great about that. I then have some other things coming down the pike that are super duper secret and I'm trying to not even think about them until after pattern releases and Knit Ithaca, which is my local knitting retreat, which is coming in just two weeks. So 53 people come from around the country. I don't think we have anybody from overseas this year. I think it's all pretty much domestic travelers. And we all get together and knit, and we have classes this year. Thea Coleman is coming, and she's teaching. And um, sign-ups for 2020. We are going to do it again next year. Come out in March, and I'll release more information about that later this winter if you're interested in hearing about a future retreat. Um, if you have any questions, ask below, and I'm happy to chime in and answer them. Obviously, via typing, I can't get back on here once this is done. To tell you anything but if you have questions you want me to talk about in further logs that would be awesome if you want to let me know anything you would love me to cover or go over whenever i do tutorials i tend to keep them completely separate from these because i don't want you to have to like slog through a whole log just to find like a nugget of knowledge so those little nuggets that i do when i do designs are i try to keep them within the pattern or i release them separately um Thank you so much for watching and listening to me ramble, and I'm pretty excited for you guys to see what's coming down the pike 
in the next few weeks. So if you're not signed up for my mailing list, definitely do that. If you want to hear, um, know quickly when more of these logs come out, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the little alarm button that's right below here, that will make it so you get an email and then you'll automatically know when one of these comes out. And thank you so much. I really appreciate you all. You make it possible for me to be able to do what I do. I kind of think of you all as my bosses, which is a little creepy, but kind of fun for you, I think. Take care. Thank you so much. Oh. Best mug ever, right?